Dear Mr. Besim Bechai, Minister of Economic Development of Kosovo, thank you for the honor of joining us at the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy here in Berlin and for your lecture and discussions with us today. Thank you. We would now like to ask you some more questions in order to hear your thoughts and opinions on some very important issues. Mm, over the past 15 years, the ICD has worked to extend current research programs and practices in the field of cultural diplomacy, founding the Academy for Cultural Diplomacy and becoming the first institution to have higher education programs in the field of cultural diplomacy. In your opinion, has cultural diplomacy been useful to help raising relations between the Republic of Kosovo and other states? Let me do the very a small correction. I used to be before Minister of Economic Development, currently I'm Minister of Finance in, in my country. And uh, to answer your question, definitely yes. Uh, we do believe uh, very much that uh, cultural diplomacy and cultural exchanges are uh, through economic diplomacy. We are trying to involve uh, our institutions in, in our countries are the, the easiest way to find a common uh, ground language, at least uh, in the countries which uh, have recent history in the conflicts and then wars. So basically, uh, I do be believe that uh, uh, culture, sports, music, and other stuff are of high importance. I can mention one of uh, our, uh, let's say, very proudly I can say that we have uh, Melinda Kilmandi, who is uh, in uh, judo, uh, the world champion. Uh, she won recently in different uh, tournaments, uh, medals, and uh, this is much more than sometimes we politicians do in promoting Kosovo and culture as well, uh, and politics and economy and everything. So I do believe that um, integration or interrelations between economy, culture, overall, and politics have to go hand in hand in order to uh, find the real values of a certain country. Yeah. Now, the ICD Organization for Youth Education and Development, dedicated to this initiation, promotion and execution of education and development programs for the youth. As your role as an academic professor, what issues do you think young people should focus on during these modern times? I'm a university teacher since uh, 1996 and uh, I enjoy my time being with, with my students and sharing perspectives and speaking about history and uh, uh, talking about the economic models and the perspective of the countries. Definitely uh, modern economy is um, the economy which uh, is a, r a vibrant uh, environment where uh, no easy for, for planning for the future and uh, a very demanding time for everyone. So they have to live uh, with this uh, dynamism and they have to live on the so-called long life learning uh, system on a daily basis in order uh, to be competitive. What we are trying to promote in, in, in my country, in the Republic of Kosovo, is that we want to promote our students and to, to, to make them understand that they should not uh, aim only market in, in our country. They should aim market of uh, the world, the market of the region. Uh, speaking about this and having said this, if we see the globalization today as a process, and uh, if we compare the uh, globalization levels through the history, we are now at the stage when the globalization is depending on the persons and the individual values. Mm -hmm. So basically it does not matter from where are you or what kind of uh, uh, background, uh, cultural background, or what kind of uh, national background you have. If you are good, you will be received in the markets, and especially uh, this is now with the technology developments and social media and social life that uh, it's uh, adjuncting economy is something that uh, our, our new students and the younger youngsters are facing. So basically we are trying them to give an over, overview of the global picture of the economy and the world and then trying to go down and uh, give more specifics on the, on the economic manners. Now I got a question relating and connecting youngsters and, and politics. How can young people be involved uh, within parliaments in order to reduce political apathy amongst them? Well, to be honest, we don't have that much political apathy in my country, uh, which is a situation maybe because of uh, 
we uh, recently have created a state and uh, we recently uh, gone out of the war so that people care very much about uh, their future and by caring very much of the future they are caring as well about the politics. Uh, definitely we are trying to involve our young generations. There are several young uh, or youth organizations which are trying to make people more involved in the, in the let's say, uh, public policy orientations or whatever. I was uh, for some times uh, working with the young generation in so-called uh, civic education uh, where we were thinking of creating the, uh, the tools to the youngsters uh, of the critical thinking and being active in uh, the public policy creation uh, in, in, their, in their countries. Uh, this is important because uh, this cannot be uh, brought by one single decision of the government or whatever. This is a generation uh, system to go uh, through that and I'm very very pleased to say that we have a uh, very bright uh, we have very active and uh, we do we are we are very proud of all those people who are not only aiming at this time Kosovo market because our market is small uh, but uh, wherever we go as a politicians uh, we meet our, our people the young people who are gone to for education and getting and broadening their perspectives for the future and they are ready to come back and work for, for the country. So it's a kind of maybe uh, the situation where we are speaking about the, let's say, so-called patriotism in terms of doing some more activities, uh, getting educating and uh, bringing that knowledge in, in the country. So with the new, with the young generations, we are trying to, to, to convince them that we are not in need only for the capital investments and the financial investments in the country, but we need investments uh, through uh, knowledge and uh, that is what we are looking in the young generations and the people who are studying either in Kosovo or abroad and coming back and work for, for, for the state. You've just mentioned that Kosovo is a young country. Well, Kosovo is the youngest country in Europe. Which kind of governance and administration system has Kosovo chosen, and which country was your role model? Basically, we are a parliamentary uh, republic where uh, we have the government and parliament. It's, uh, it, as, as a key role and the president which is more on the representative part of it. Um, the, the idea of the country was to create the country which serves citizens and which is uh, very much oriented toward let's say well-being of all, of all citizens. Um, when we speak about the role model, um, if we look into the region we were uh, always looking toward Slovenia because uh, we were part of the same system in, in, in before while ex Yugoslavia has existed, uh, so uh, they were almost uh, always advanced in, in, the, in the level, uh, very much focused in the economy, very much focused in higher education, and that was for years uh, the, the role model for, for all of us. And now there are mixes. Myself, I studied in Croatia, I spent uh, five years there, uh, and that generation now is um, in the middle and higher level of the state in hierarchy. While now we are having generations which are from London, uh, Austria, US, and those generations are bringing their role models. So I can say that we have no one role model. I remember one of the visits I made to Malaysia some years ago, and the, the success uh, of the government they have had was through diversification of education and the models. So basically they were paying students to, uh, to, to go everywhere in the world to study the models and bring the best of those models. So what, that is what, what we are trying in the, in the Kosovo scale. I mean, it's, it's a small scale, but we are trying to get the students all around the world and bring the best expertises and then uh, to be implemented there. It's a very optimistic approach, uh, but uh, we do believe very much in that and we do believe in the power of the young generation. Right. Now I want to get back to an element of your speech and namely your relationship to Serbia. Which is the greatest wall between Serbia and Kosovo in terms of economical cooperation? First, we have no free movement of goods. Uh, so basically, uh, until recent times, we were not able to export of any of our products. Mm -hmm. While Serbia was having market, uh, one of the most important markets in, in, in Kosovo. Mm -hmm. uh, this, is, this starts with, with that, uh, and then uh, there is a problem of uh, free movement of the people. So basically people cannot travel 
to Serbia with uh, documents of Kosovo or with uh, registration plates of, of Kosovo. When, the, when they come to the border, they have to change, to change the, the registration plates. Uh, but on top of it, it's not only the wall of institutions, it's the wall of mentality. Mm. It is existing in, 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 in Serbia and we were even having a lot of damages over the war. We, our hand was, was, was open for, for relations and for entering in a peace uh, agreements with them and uh, to, 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 to pass that one. And this was the match which shown a little bit of reality on the ground that as soon as we, we speak about it, but one single element can, can make situation more difficult. So we unfortunately saw that uh, when sports and a kind of cultural diplomacy uh, should play the role, this ended up in the very high political level uh, discussions. But uh, again, uh, as a nation, uh, we were every time ready uh, to go and cooperate, but respecting the values of everyone, respecting uh, sovereignty of everyone. Uh, Kosovo is ready to have uh, good uh, relationships and uh, neighboring relations as a two independent countries. We don't have any problems with, with that. Uh, at once, uh, the, 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 the territory uh, orientation to get the territory from someone is, is over. So uh, that's why we are trying to, through the dialogue, to, to, to convince the Serbian side that as, as soon as they get out from, from the history and from the myths and being in their reality uh, life, it's better for, for the whole region, not only for, for Serbia. Mr. Bichai, um, yesterday we've celebrated 25 years since the fall of the Berlin Wall. Thinking of the lack of the free movement for people of Kosovo, what message do you have for the European Union's leaders? I mentioned even during my speech uh, here um, today, we need credible European perspective. We can deliver to the certain level that we are able to deliver. We understand that we have a lot of deficiencies as a country, as a region. But with the help, uh, we can come there. I do believe much faster than other countries in the region. Uh, but uh, we don't need only words from European Union. Uh, I used to be for one year Minister of European Integration and uh, we're about to launch the visa liberalization for, for uh, Kosovarian uh, citizens. We fulfilled all technical uh, capacities and uh, the tomorrow day when uh, the uh, progress report was to be launched. Finally, because of politics, uh, this was postponed. And then on top of it, we got more and more uh, conditions every time. I understand that is a politics. We have five non-recognizers in European Union and it's difficult for European Union institutions to take uh, steps uh, in, in, in that direction. But with uh, this situation, nobody is, is benefiting. We are having possibilities that uh, a lot of people, they are getting now uh, citizenship in, in Albania or in Macedonia or in, uh, because of family relations or in Serbia. We have uh, those who are not able to travel, basically our students and the people who are not having, let's say, uh, financial ability to go to other countries and find, find that way. And that is, uh, when, when I speak about the credible European perspective, uh, I do believe that there is a concrete steps which should be taken mm -hmm. and not uh, keeping always on the mood. Uh, if you do a referendum today uh, in Kosovo, I do believe that 80%, uh, 85% of them are ready to, to go and get the challenges for getting uh, or being part of European Union. Mm -hmm. While when I was minister, this was at least 90%. Mm -hmm. So uh, as, as long as this process goes, uh, the willingness and the people will have which more doubts into the European integration. And they, all of us who are in politics, uh, we need to have the tools in our hands together with European uh, Union to support all kind of structural reforms, all kind of institutional reforms which are needed into the, into the state to be able to, to, to meet the standards, at least minimum standards for, for getting integrated. Mr. Beshim Bechai, Minister of Finance of Kosovo, thank you so much for thank you. being with us here uh, today and lots of good luck um, with your work for the development of Kosovo. Thank you and good luck to you as well. Thank you so much.